buy this, buy, buy this figure, just, just, just go out and buy it. Hey, what's up? Today I have Studio Series Blitzwing. Yes, the bot who thought you could not hide. This joke has been run into the ground on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, please. <laughs> this thing is just so cool to look at. It's basically the movie equivalent to the Seeker Mold. And it's so cool to finally have something like the Seeker Mold. Now let's just hope Hasbro makes a billion repaints, but knowing Hasbro, they will only be available in the US or something dumb like that. This guy retails for about $30 in the US and $40 Canadian, and this is one of those Voyagers that I feel like it's worth that price. It's solid for the most part, and has great articulation, and is just cool to look at. It has a great presence that really makes it stand out on your shelf. I want to get the comparisons out of the way real quick, just because there's something I want to throw at you. So next to Jeep Bumblebee, and these things look cool together. Imagine a two-pack of this. Oh, that would be cool. Getting a two-pack of like a slight repaints of them, like maybe more accurate paint jobs. I'd, I'd buy that. Next to Shatter here, and even though we didn't get to see them together in the film, they still look pretty good together. And next to Nitro Zeus, and wait, Nitro Zeus? Why Nitro Zeus? Well, hear me up. This figure has what I'm coining the Nitro Zeus Syndrome. Basically, it's a semi hard to find figure that everybody wants. He was in the film for a grand total of like five seconds or something, got some of the coolest scenes in the movie, and is a surprisingly solid figure for such a minor ish character. And both of these figures are based off of characters like that. And I remember when everyone wanted Nitro Zeus and you couldn't find one at any store, especially in my area. My Nitro Zeus actually came from the States. My mom went over there to visit my uncle, who lives in the States, and was at Target and found one there. So it was very hard to find here, and to a certain extent, so is Blitzwing. I've only seen it on shelves once, and that was when I went to pick it up, and it was the only Studio Series figure at Walmart. There were no Deluxes, there were no Voyagers, there were no Leaders. They had one Blitzwing. So. A very hard to find figure, at least in my area and it kind of in this country, so he kind of shares the same qualities with Nitro Zeus and that's why I'm comparing the two. The sculpted detail on this figure is super super nice to look at, like just standing, just it's standing there, he, he just looks so cool, like I'm recording the voiceover right now while looking at Blitzwing, he just looks so cool. It's, I really love this design, it's my, what, like, this is probably like my third favorite design just under um, Revenge of the Fallen Mixmaster, so I really like how this thing looks. The head is perfect. I remember those early photos of this guy when like the picture started leaking out. The head was the same color as the body, that same gray, and that really turned me off. Like I had no interest in this figure when I saw those pictures with that head sculpt. But then the, the first round of like Tauntaun reviews and whatever came out and he had the normal head and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, no, I'm buying this thing. Now this guy does have some issues, no figure is without them, however, this is a pretty big issue. The chest. It has open and bay, oh, open and bay? It has open and play big springs problem. So the chest tabs into the back where the wings are and yeah cool, it, it tabs in, not moving, but once you move the arms and yeah goodbye coherent robot mode, these tabs aren't super strong. And couple that with how tight the shoulders are and it just comes undone all the time and it's actually kind of annoying just like open and play big spring if you pay attention to the third party scene of transformers you'll know that that figure his chest didn't tab in properly i did make a fix on that so you can check that out i'll link it in the description if you have that figure but blitzwing has that same issue it's really the only real issue that i have with the robot mode everything else i think is fine save for the lack of ankle up and down movement but yeah, that's just super annoying and I kind of wish they had spent a little bit more time maybe tab it into the cockpit itself so that it stayed in place. But I mean, if you just hold the chest, you're fine. For Voyager, he also does come with a decent amount of accessories. You get these missile bomb things, this pointy needle hand that he used to rip out uh, Bumblebee's voice box, spoiler alert, and this incredibly nice detailed gun. All of which have places to go on the robot. You can put the the torpedoes on the wings, the gun in the hand, and what, swappable hands on a Voyager? You're paying $40 for a toy that actually has swappable hands. What? And the best part is they're five millimeter ports, so you can plug them in wherever you want, or not plug them in wherever you want, but you can plug whatever you want into them. I don't know how to read. 
Yeah, but they're five millimeter ports. You can plug in whatever you want. You can plug in a sword, a gun, a fishing rod, I don't know. Articulation is standard, nothing out of the ordinary, but nothing bad, minus the chest. The right hand does open and close for some reason, but that, that, I still like that that's there. It does make uh, posing him grabbing Bumblebee or flying in the air a lot nicer, and I think that's probably why they put that there. I just wish there was another locking point on the chest so that it could stay in place. Transformation is great, apart from the hands. The panels don't like to stay put on mine and always love to push themselves out on underneath the wings, and it's super frustrating. That and just the feet not having anywhere to go kind of seems a little bit lazy, but to be fair, you're getting a lot of robot for this price. Jet mode is... It's okay. It's not the same jet as in the film, because the one in the film had one rear dorsal fin thing, I don't know, planes. Um, this one has two. The tail fins pointed down slightly on the sides. This one, you can point them down, but the instructions want you to leave them flat. The jet in the movie was a lot more narrow. The wings uh, dipped down a bit and then angled up at the tips. This one doesn't do that. It, it, if you know um, Autobot Slingshot, that's kind of what the jet, that's kind of the same type of ish jet mode that Blitzwing turned into in the film. But this, I think, is based off concept. It's one of those concept art figures again. Which is not bad, this time it actually doesn't look too bad, but I still wish we kind of had an accurate one. But, I mean, what we got is okay, I guess. The feet stick out of the sides, and the bottom... Just don't look at the bottom. <laughs> don't, it's, it's not the cleanest kibble-free, kibble transformation on a jet ever. But you're not going to get a kibble-free jet mode. There's always going to be a little bit hanging out the bottom because it's very difficult to turn something relatively flat into a proportional robot unless you're looking at movie star screen. Yeah, all the weapons have a place to go and I really like where the gun stores right underneath. It like fills in that gap. It does a really good job. I think that's really cool. It does however cover the stand port. So that's a bit annoying. Uh, next to Shatter and B and these look pretty good together. Shatter does have the better plane mode though. And it also Shatter's plane mode is what I'm talking about. That's Blitzwing's plane mode it looks very similar more similar to Shatter's than it does to Blitzwing's, in my opinion. Um, but overall, he fits in with the Bumblebee line, next to Nitro Zeus, and to me, Nitro's jet looks better. I also did panel line mine a little bit, because I felt that it looked a little bit plain. But overall, the jet mode on Blitzwing is not bad. It's not why you buy the figure. You buy it for the robot mode, and it is totally worth that. Overall, just buy Blitzwing. Just go out and buy him. The robot mode nails the look of this figure the jet mode is meh but the robot more than makes up for it the detail is nice and damn i just can't stop looking at it it's like it's sitting right like here you you can hear it right here oh his wing fell off that's blitzwing right there he's in my hand while i'm doing this he's just he's that good he's a figure that i don't really want to put down that often and a figure like that is definitely worth it again this is my second favorite robot design from the movies Mixmaster beats it, and then Optimus Prime, the Dark of the Moon design of Optimus Prime right now is my number one, because I actually kind of like how that looks. But yeah, that's this one's my, my number three favorite robot movie design, and definitely one of my top ten movie toys um, from the, the main line, not including movie masterpiece. This is definitely one of my top ten favorites, I have to say that. that is, that's how good this thing is. Anyway, that's been my look at Studio Series Blitzwing. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, linked below. Patreon and coffee links are below as well if you would like to support the channel. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.